Welcome to the Pimp Your Brilliance podcast with Monique Malcolm, a show about leveraging your existing knowledge, unique skills, or passion to build a thriving creative business. I aim to show you what's really possible when you stop letting fear have all the fun and start taking action towards your goals. You can learn more about this show and subscribe for updates by visiting PimpYourBrilliance.com. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Pimp Your Brilliance. I'm so glad that you're here. This is episode number 91, and you can find show notes at pimpyourbrilliance.com backslash 91. So hey, y'all, I'm back after a short break. But today I want to wrap up our conversation about how to get better at email marketing. So far, I've covered things like the four elements of an effective lead magnet. On episode 90, I share different types of emails that you can send to your subscribers. But I didn't want to leave out my favorite part of email marketing, which is sending email sequences, because this is where the magic happens. This is the game changer because you can automate a lot of this. Actually, email sequences for the most part are 100% automated. They're triggered by either an action or a time, a specific time. And then you just let the email sequence do the work. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. You don't actually have to do that much. It's one of these things where you do the work up front, you set it up, and then you let the sequences do what they're supposed to do. And this is why I say it's really important to make sure when you're choosing an email marketing software, you choose one that has automations or email sequence abilities built into it. Unfortunately, when it comes to email automations, email automation capabilities, it's one of those cases where the cheapest option is not always the best option, but you're really going to have to think about your business what type of email automations you might want, what things you're selling, your business model, and that will help you determine what software you should choose as your email or marketing company. I currently use ConvertKit. I find them to be, they're not super beginner friendly, but in comparison to some of the more robust big boy email marketing companies out there, like ActiveCampaign, things of that nature, Drip, I find that they're fairly affordable, And their email marketing, I'm sorry, their email automations are great. And it's not that big of a learning curve. It is a a learning curve, but it's not huge. If you can't do ConvertKit just yet, MailChimp is another great option. They have the ability to create email sequences and they have a good solid amount of email triggers for you to play around with and set up. So I want to start at the top. You know, I'm really big on making sure that I'm explaining things and I'm making it easy for you to understand. So I'm not going to assume that you know what an email sequence is. So let's start there. An email sequence is a series of emails automatically sent to specific segments of people on your email list. What does that mean in more simplified terms? It's a set of emails. So this can be one email. This could be seven emails. It's going to depend on you know how you have it set up. But these emails are designed to go to specific groups of people on your email list. So this could be people who have made purchases. This can be people who have signed up for a specific wait list for a new product. This can be coaching clients. There's gonna be so many different segments of email uh, subscribers available depending on how you are collecting emails. But an email sequence is a set of emails that are gonna be sent to those specific groups of people. Now, email sequences are useful for a variety of purposes, especially when it comes to digital products. This can be a triggered workflow that helps nurture new leads, follow up after a purchase is made, or even sending automated podcast updates. Email sequences can make your business more efficient. For example, I use an email sequence to automatically onboard new members of the Brilliance Lounge. I send emails that explain to them different community features. It gives them their login details. And doing this ensures that they get the best possible experience in the beginning as soon as you sign up, because I don't have time to walk every single new person through the Brilliant Sound and teach everyone how to use it. So instead, I have an onboarding sequence that does that heavy lifting for me. And as I mentioned earlier on in the show, you write these sequences, you set them up once, and then they just run every time there's a trigger. So every time a new person joins the lounge, They are tagged a certain way inside of ConvertKit, and then ConvertKit does all the heavy lifting by sending them the emails, and they send it on a specific interval. So I can have it sent every day, every couple days, 
but I have this set up and it runs 24-7, 365 days a year. It's basically my robot onboarder and I don't have to do anything else to it once I set it up. So I want to share with you four email sequences that you must have for your creative business. Now, you know, as a creative entrepreneur, I believe that you should be working smarter, not harder, and systems are my jam. So I want to go over four sequences that you can write and set up one time, and they're going to go out based on your trigger over and over again. But this is going to save you time. This is going to help you with customer service. It's just going to make you a better, more efficient business, and it's going to be automated. So you're going to be wowing people and you're not really going to be doing any extra work once you get it set up. So the very first email sequence that I suggest, this is the one that if you don't already have this in place, you need to go put it on your calendar, put in your project manager to start writing right away and get it set up. This is a welcome series. A welcome series is triggered after a new subscriber signs up for your email list. So over a series of days or even weeks, This sequence sends emails to help familiarize new community members with your business. A welcome sequence is important because you want new community members to get started out on the right foot. You don't want to just send them a freebie and then leave them hanging because depending on how often you send out emails, let's say, for example, you send out an email every two weeks. If someone signs up the day after you sent your most recent email, it's going to be almost two weeks before they hear from you again. And by then, they could have forgotten who you are. Maybe they have already found an answer to a question that they were looking for. Whatever it is, you want to make sure that you are welcoming people, like you're rolling out the welcome mat for them and letting them know like, hey, I'm Monique. Here is what I do. Here are some ways that you can work with me. Here are some resources that I've created that have answered questions that my audience members have, that type of thing. Welcome series are the perfect time to share who you are and who you serve popular resources such as blog posts, podcasts, videos. You can even send some popular worksheets and workbooks that you've created for your audience. You can share different ways to connect. So you can encourage people to follow you on Instagram or on Twitter or YouTube or TikTok, whatever it is that you're into. And then finally, you can tell people how they can hire you or how they can work with you. And a lot of people shy away from doing this in their welcome series. They think that the welcome series is strictly to inform people, but you can also sell in your welcome series because chances are if somebody landed on your website and they ended up on your email list, they have a problem that they think you can solve and why not go ahead and let them know of different ways they can work with you. Don't make them wait forever to get this information. So that's my first one, a welcome series. The next type of email sequence that you're going to want to have is a post-purchase follow-up sequence. This is one of the simplest and smartest customer service hacks that you can have in your business because this email sequence is sent out after someone makes a purchase. And I think a big mistake that happens, especially with people who sell digital products, is that they sell something to someone and then it's just hands off. They gave me their money. I just let it go. I didn't do anything else. By having a post-purchase follow-up sequence in play, you're now able to build a stronger relationship with your customer because over a series of weeks, you can send them helpful resources that are really going to help them not only implement what it was that they purchased, you can potentially help them become a repeat customer by sharing related product suggestions. So with doing this post-purchase follow-up sequence, it's really helping you with customer service because you can send emails at different intervals to just check in, see if they have any questions, You can give them insight on how they can get in contact with you if they do have questions or where they can be directed to a community where they can connect with other like-minded people. You can send additional resources to help them implement what it is that they purchased. And then you can even ask them to send you a testimonial. So if it's been a month, a month and a half, you can reach back out and say, hey, did you like this? Did it help you get a result? If it did, I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to get a testimonial. And this is all done on autopilot. You don't have to do anything. So after you get your welcome sequence created, if you have a product for sale, do not forget to put your post-purchase follow-up sequence into play. This doesn't have to be hard. It can be as simple as having a thank you for purchasing email. Here's details on how to get your thing that you bought. 
a few days later or a few weeks later, asking them how's it going, if they have any questions. A few weeks after that, sending them additional resources to help them make the most of their investment. And then finally, after a decent amount of time has passed, asking for that testimonial. Boom, you've done it. That was four emails. The third type of email sequence that you need to have is a subscriber re-engagement sequence. Now here's the honest truth. Sometimes email lists get stale. I know that we harp so much on build your list, build your list, build your list, and you feel like you should have this massive list. But over time, people become disinterested or they stop opening your emails at the frequency that they once did. And that's normal. This happens to everyone. And when this happens, that's when you want to send your re-engagement sequence. Because the hard truth is that we pay a premium to have people subscribe to our email list. So we want to make sure that we're only sending emails to people who are actively engaging, people who are showing that they still want to hear from us. Otherwise, it's affecting your list by decreasing your open rates and making you at risk for higher spam complaints. And you don't want that because this lowers your reputation, which makes it harder for those who want to get emails from you to actually receive them. So all of these email marketing software that we use, that we invest in, they keep track of our reputation, our our email reputation. If you get too many spam complaints, if you have really low open rates and you have a giant list, you're getting flagged in the back end of these systems as potentially being a spammer or someone who's not using their list, their list in the correct way, according to the terms of service of the software. So they'll flag you and they'll start sending your emails less or even Google will flag you and start sending your emails to spam automatically. And that just makes it that much harder for people who want to hear from you actually be able to hear from you. So this is why email list hygiene is important. And as a practice, you should be running a subscriber re-engagement sequence every quarter to those people who have not opened your email in the past 90 days. So I think that's a good amount of time. You could stretch it out to every six months, but 90 days is really a good solid amount of time and it will keep your open rates that much higher if you do it on a regular basis. And this is something that you put into your project manager to remind you to do it at the end of every quarter. And it's not as scary as it sounds. You're giving people the chance to opt out of receiving your emails or let you know that they're still interested in hearing from you because sometimes people just get busy. You know, I've seen on on social media people who have hundreds and thousands of emails in their inbox, so maybe it just got lost in the shuffle. There's a lot of reasons. It's not always that people don't want to hear from you. Maybe they're not getting your emails for whatever reason. So you just want to send these out. After about a week, anyone who hasn't unsubscribed or who has not engaged is deleted. And this keeps your email marketing software costs low and your email reputation high. And this is important, especially if you are wanting to have a business that utilizes passive income. Making sure your email reputation is high, making sure people are getting your emails is extremely important. Protect your list at all costs. Finally, the last type of email sequence that you want to have is a sales sequence. That should not be that surprising because this is a business. And if you're not selling, you're not going to be in business for very long. So sales sequences make it really easy for you to make sales offers automatically. This is super clutch when you think about how limited your time is in a day. If you know that you need to make 10 sales offers every day to make the, to hit your revenue goals. Sometimes you don't always have the ability to do that. You could be busy. You might be slammed with clients. Your child might be sick, but with a sales sequence in play, your sales offers are going out automatically to people who have opted in to your list for whatever reason. An active sales sequence can help you build the know, like, and trust factor with your audience, as well as showcase ways that they can pay you. So you need a sales sequence if you want to have these passive income streams. And all of us want to have money that we're making in our sleep, that we're making while we are grocery shopping. Like it's amazing to get those sales notifications, but that doesn't happen without some upfront work. And that is having a sales sequence in play. 
Now you might be thinking a sales sequence, that sounds hard. That sounds like that might be a lot of work. No, we're going to keep this simple. Okay. And remember that you can always test things. You can always go back and make changes later. But in the vein of keeping things simple for your sales sequence, you just want to make sure that you're being mindful of who's receiving it. So remember, we talked about specific segments of people getting your emails, making sure that you're doing a good job when people are signing up to your email list to tag them, to tag what they're interested in based on what it is they opt in to receive, making sure you have a clear offer. So being very clear with your call to actions, being very clear about the transformation that people are going to receive from the thing that you are selling, and then making sure you have follow-up built into your sequence. Because let's be honest, telling somebody one time that they can buy this thing, it's not enough. People are busy. There's so many distractions, so many other things. So you just want to make sure that you have a few emails for follow-up added into your sequence on the back end just to catch anyone who may be interested, but somehow slip through the cracks. So those are my four must-have email automations that everyone should have for their creative business. To quickly recap, that is a welcome series, a post-purchase follow-up, a subscriber re-engagement sequence, and then a sales sequence. And if you take the time to put all four of these into play in your business, one, you'll find that you have less customer service issues, you'll have a more engaged email audience, and hopefully you'll have more sales. And that is really the ultimate goal. You want to make sure that you're being as impactful with your business as possible. And email sequences are a really simple way to set it and forget it. So I hope this email marketing series was really useful to you and that it has inspired you to get out there and really try to improve your email marketing skills, whether you are just beginning or you've been tinkering around for a little bit, I hope that you're sending emails to your list, that you are now inspired and motivated to create some sequences, and that you're experimenting and playing around with email marketing, learning the ropes, or just trying out new things. So I'd love to have your feedback. You can always send me an email over at hello at pimpyourbrilliance.com. You can also send me a DM over at the Pimp Your Brilliance Instagram. That's at Pimp Your Brilliance. And if Twitter is your thing, I'm over there at Star Chasers Only, which is my original Twitter account, but I'm pretty active there as well. So any of those three ways is a good way to reach out, give me your feedback on the show, or suggest a future topic. But that's all I have for this week. So until next time, go out there and pimp your brilliance. Uh-huh.